Today, I'm gonna walk you through what I eat in a day, and we're also gonna talk about why your salads might actually be hurting your weight loss. It is 8.45, and I'm not gonna lie, I am starving. Normally, I eat at eight o'clock, but I have been recording YouTube videos all morning, and I did not wanna stop until I completed my task. So I completed my YouTube videos, and now I am hungry, and I'm about to like chow down on some watermelon. And here is the watermelon stash. Look at those watermelons, beautiful. They have been really, really good so far. These recent ones have been like the best of the year. Bear is barking at something. All right, let's get up this baby right here. This is a freaking heavy watermelon. This is why I lift weights, so I can pick up watermelons like this off the floor. I hope it's red and juicy and beautiful. Oh, it's gonna be a good one. I can always tell when they like bust open that they're gonna be like good. Perfection. This makes me so happy. Ah, oh, the smell. The smell of watermelon makes me think of swimming at my grandmother's house in the summer. She had a pool. Me and all of my cousins, we would go swim just for like hours and hours and hours and we would always have watermelon and ice cream sandwiches. I don't have ice cream sandwiches anymore, but I do load up on my watermelon. So first, let's talk about your typical healthy salad. So of course you've got your greens, maybe some tomatoes, you might even add some cucumber or something like that. And then here's where things go wrong. So first off, let's talk about dressings. Dressings can be very calorie dense. Now I've got a cashew cream sauce here, so it is gonna be a plant-based dressing. There's no oil or anything like that, so it is gonna have less calories than your typical ranch dressing or something like that that's gonna have oil, dairy, things like that. So this is a better option, but even in your plant-based dressings, any dressing really that is gonna be nut or seed-based or oil-based especially, have dairy, things like that, you've just gotta be very mindful because they're gonna be very calorie dense. They're gonna pack in a lot of calories and they're not gonna have any bulk to go along with those calories. So just two tablespoons of any type of dressing that you're using can really add up quick. And let's be real, who just uses two tablespoons of a dressing? Most of the time we just drizzle the whole thing over our salad and before you know it, we're having like a quarter cup of ranch dressing on our salad. And then next up, you've got your nuts and seeds. So often, a lot of people want to just sprinkle on the pecans, the sesame seeds, the sunflower seeds, the almonds, cashews, whatever it might be on their salad. And all of these foods, these nuts, these seeds, they're very calorie dense. They're not gonna give you much bulk, just like those dressings that we talked about earlier. And so when you start adding a lot of nuts and seeds to your salad, your healthy salad is now just becoming a high fat meal. Like I'm just guessing here, but this alone could easily add like 200 calories to your salad. And of course, avocado is everyone's favorite. I used to use a lot of avocado back in my keto days. And yes, avocados do have nutrients and they are good for you. However, it's still gonna be a high fat food. So just because it's a healthy fat, doesn't mean that it's a free for all food that we just wanna be including a lot of. I mean, an avocado can easily add anywhere between 150 to 200 calories to a meal and it's not giving you any bulk to go along with those calories. So you really have to be mindful of including avocado. And of course, like I said, you can still include avocado, but if you're having a lot of it very frequently, you might wanna cut that back. And then of course, when you add all of these fatty toppings together on your salad, this healthy meal that you're eating has now become just a high fat meal. And yes, even though it might be healthier fats that you're including, it's fat is still fat, right? It's not giving you any bulk, it's just giving you a lot of calories, and fat is a lot easier in the body to convert to fat. So it's just, it's not the ideal scenario for fat loss. And now I want you to compare what we just talked about, a big fatty salad. Compare that with what I just had for breakfast, which was a big juicy watermelon. And so when I eat watermelon, I'm getting in a lot of water content, very hydrating, I'm getting a lot of bulk to help me feel satisfied, and I'm getting the carbs to keep me going and give me energy energy through the morning, it's a perfect combination. I'm not just filling up on all, all that fat, all those nuts and seeds and dressings and things like that. I'm focusing on eating clean carbs. And again, it's not that these high fat foods are inherently bad. There are healthier fats, right? It's just that it's very hard to recognize when you've eaten enough of them because they are so calorie dense, because they can be a little bit more addicting to eat. We wanna just kinda keep eating them and eating them and eating them. It's very hard to stop ourselves and recognize our body's hunger and fullness cues 
things and it's just a lot easier for the body to store the fat that we eat into the fat that we wear. So if you really want to take everything, take your weight loss to the next level, you really wanna focus on your clean carbs and your, your fruits, your vegetables, your leafy greens, your starchy vegetables, things like that over all of this fat and adding a lot of nuts and seeds and dressings and avocado to your salads. Okay, it is about 12.30 and I am hungry for lunch. I'm gonna have apples today. And so typically I've been having a lot of mangoes lately because I'm trying to make use of the mangoes while I have them because with fall approaching, I won't have mangoes anymore, which is so sad because I love mangoes, but I love my Envy apples too. So today for lunch, I'm gonna have some Envy apples. Bear. Okay, good boy, good boy. So now I wanna talk about why filling up on only leafy greens might not be the best strategy for weight loss. So let's look at this entire container of leafy greens that I have right here. This looks like a lot of lettuce, right? But this entire thing is not that many calories. I mean, I'm just guessing here, but I wanna say like maybe 30, maybe 30 calories for the whole rest of this box. So if this was your main meal and this is all that you were eating, you would be seriously under eating and you would not be getting in enough calories at that meal. Now let's say you're going to eat bananas as your main meal. So now you're actually getting in enough calories to help you feel satisfied and give you the fuel that you need. Eating clean carbs is gonna help you to have that sustainable energy, and it's also gonna help you to maintain a healthy metabolism. And this is what's crucial for maintaining a healthy metabolism and preventing those midday energy crashes that you might be having. So when you rely too heavily on these low calorie leafy greens, you're really missing out on these clean carbs because your body needs them for fuel. Without clean carbs, you might start to feel tired and irritable, and you can even start to crave those sugary snacks. So clean carbs provide steady, sustainable energy. And with Without them, you might start to experience those energy crashes that lead to cravings for those high calorie processed foods. And on top of that, fruits and starchy vegetables contain essential vitamins and minerals. And lacking these nutrients can sometimes manifest as a craving for a less nutritious food. So when I include clean carbs in my diet, whether that's in the form of watermelon or bananas or apples or mangoes or whatever it is, by including these fruits and these starchy vegetables in my diet, I'm giving my body the fuel that it needs. And this helps to prevent intense cravings and energy dips that can lead to this overeating later on. And remember, it's not about avoiding leafy greens. I am not saying that. I want you to be including leafy greens in abundance throughout the day. I think most people have an issue of not eating enough leafy greens. So I'm not saying that I don't want you to not eat leafy greens. I just don't want you to only be eating these salads with no clean carbs like bananas or something like that. Because if you're just eating a bunch of salad all day long, you are not going to get the fuel that your body needs. So just make sure that yes, absolutely include a lot of leafy greens, but also include a lot of clean carbs as well. Right now it is three o'clock and I'm gonna have me some cotton candy grapes. These are so good. Like when you smell them, they literally smell like cotton candy. These are so freaking tasty. All right, so now let's talk about the 80-10-10 macronutrient ratio, which is what I like to follow. Basically, this is a low-fat, plant-based way of eating. So basically, here's how this breaks down. 80% of my overall calories are coming from carbohydrates, 10% from fat, and 10% from protein. So because I'm getting most of my calories from clean carbohydrates, like my fruit and starchy vegetables and things like that, I am giving my body that constant supply of glucose, and I'm eating clean carbs, which are the body's ideal fuel source. And so I'm not not having these cravings and this hunger at the end of the day. And of course, all of this makes it less likely that I go eat junk food. And so I know that the obvious next question is, well, is 10% of fat enough? Is 10% of your overall calories coming from protein enough? Shouldn't you be getting more healthy fats? Shouldn't you be eating more protein? That's typically what people say when they see this 80-10-10 ratio. But here's what you have to understand is that all of your plant foods, your fruits, your vegetables, your leafy greens, your starchy vegetables are going to contain small amounts of 
fat and small amounts of protein. And so I am getting all the fat and the protein that I need from the foods that I'm naturally eating throughout the day. I don't have to go out of my way to go add in healthy fats. I don't have to go out of my way to go try to find the protein. As long as I focus on getting enough calories from my clean carbohydrates, I know that I am going to get enough protein and I'm gonna get enough fat naturally. So basically what all of this means is that I can eat a large volume of food without having to count calories. I'm able to stay satiated and satisfied and have energy throughout the day without feeling deprived. So let's talk about why fruit is so key in this entire process. So first off, fruits are naturally low in calories, but they're high in volume and nutrients. So this means that you can eat a lot more and feel full without overloading on calories. And they also help with digestion and make you feel more full and satisfied. So now I know you might be thinking, well, what about the sugar in fruit? Isn't fruit too much sugar? Here's the thing, the sugar in fruit is completely different than the sugar you're gonna find in soda and candy and your white table sugar, totally a different thing. When you eat fruit, you're getting antioxidants, you're getting vitamins, minerals, anti-cancer, antiviral, antibacterial properties. You're getting so much more with fruit that you would never dream of getting with your refined sugar. And on top of that, fruits are gonna be incredibly hydrating, so most fruits are gonna be about 80% water. So not only is this gonna support your overall health, but it's also just gonna help you to stay more full and satisfied throughout the day. Of course, all fruits are really great for weight loss, but some really good ones to focus on are gonna be like your berries, your melons, melons, pears, apples, your citrus fruits like oranges, things like that are really great fruits to focus on. And now this might surprise you a little bit, but potatoes, your sweet potatoes, your golden potatoes, your russet potatoes are great for weight loss. And I know that they've been demonized in this like current dieting culture, but potatoes are great foods to focus on. They're gonna help you feel full and satiated. They're a great source of clean carbohydrates, not to mention they are a powerhouse of nutrients. Other great options for starchy vegetables are like your pumpkin, your butternut squash, your acorn squash, things like that. All of those are good options. These complex carbohydrates are great sources is a fuel that your body loves. And because starchy vegetables are gonna be lower in fat and higher in your fiber and your water content, they're gonna help you to feel full, satiated, and satisfied. This means that they're gonna give you a lot of bulk without a lot of extra calories. And on top of that, they're gonna have the minerals, the vitamins, the antioxidants, all the things that your body thrives on. And so what I'm about to say here is key. When you are preparing your potatoes, you do not want to add a bunch of oil, a bunch of fat, a bunch of sour cream, and butter, and bacon, and cheese. I know know that all of those things are delicious, but when you're adding all of those things on your potatoes, with your potatoes, you are making it an incredibly high fat meal. So just like the salads we talked about earlier, it's not that the leafy greens are bad. Of course, leafy greens are good. I want you to eat a lot of leafy greens. It's all the things that go on the leafy greens that can make your salad an unhealthy option. If you start including a lot of fat, a lot of oil, bacon bits, cheese on your salad, you know, ranch dressing, all of these things. Now we're just looking at a high fat meal. It's the same thing with potatoes, right? Potatoes are great. I want you to eat a lot of potatoes. But what I don't want you to do is to use that as an excuse to now eat a lot of cheese and sour cream and butter and olive oil and you know, whatever other fatty toppings there are out there. When you start putting all of that fat on the potato, that's why the potato is quote unquote bad because of all the things that come with it, not because of the potato itself. So don't get those two things confused. When you go to eat your potatoes and cook your potatoes, Eat just the potato, maybe have you know some seasonings, uh, a low fat sauce or something like that. If you want to include a minimal amount of your plant-based fats, that's fine, but you just have to be very mindful of how much fat you're including and not get crazy with it. Remember, a drizzle of olive oil can add up so quick, especially if you're gonna use oil. Now, I typically don't use oil at all, but if you're going to use oil, measure it out you've got to measure it out because I mean, a drizzle of olive oil could easily be a quarter of a cup if you're not actually measuring it. So definitely measure out your oils and your other fats as well because they just add up so quick. So when you start to include these starchy vegetables in your diet, not only are you giving your body the carbs that it needs. Hey bear, hey, thank you for visiting me. Bear wanted to come say hello and make a showing. So when you're giving your body the carbohydrates that it needs, you're not gonna have as many cravings. You're gonna feel more full and satiated and satisfied. You're gonna be able to eat more and weigh less. It is a beautiful combo.
All right, so now let's look at what a good meal plan might look like if you are wanting to try this way of eating, including more of your clean carbs, eat less fat. What would a day look like for you? So what I like to do is I like to eat whole fresh fruit all throughout the day. So for breakfast, I'll have a mono meal of watermelon. It doesn't have to be watermelon. It can be any fruit that you want, any sweet, juicy fruit that you like. And then for lunch, I will have typically another mono meal. I like to eat mono meals. I think they are a very powerful tool for just reconnecting with our body's natural hunger and fullness cues. So I really like mono meals, but you absolutely could eat an abundance of, of different types of varieties of fruit at lunch if that is what you wanted to do. But I like to have fruit for breakfast, fruit for lunch, and fruit again for snacks. And then in the evening, that's when I will transition to something that's a bit more heavy, a bit more dense, a bit more savory. So that's when I get into the starchy vegetables, like my potato dishes, maybe even every now and then like a brown rice dish, a, uh, a whole grain, a gluten-free whole grain, or a legume dish, something like that. And of course, I always have a big leafy green salad in the evening as well. And so you'll notice that I'm definitely still having a salad in the evening. I don't want you to take this video and think like that you shouldn't be eating a salad, because <laughs> I definitely want you to of course be eating salads. I just want you to do it in the right way, and I also want you to be eating plenty of clean carbs along with your salads as well. Now it's about 4.30 and I'm gonna go ahead and make dinner. For dinner tonight, I'm going to have golden potatoes roasted in the oven with some dill and onion powder. It's a really delicious dinner. I love making this. So what I like to do is I will kind of cube my golden potatoes in sort of like large-ish cubes and then I will steam them for about 10 minutes. And while that's steaming, I'm gonna go ahead and give my leafy greens a rough chop for my salad. I have about a half a pound of salad for dinner. Once those golden potatoes are done steaming, I only like to cook them partially, and then I will go ahead and sprinkle them with some dill and onion powder and kind of toss that around with the uh, potatoes, get them nice and coated, and then I'll put that on a pan. I like to spread this out evenly on the pan and make sure that there's a lot of space in between the potatoes, that way they get nice and crispy in the oven. If they're touching, they won't get as crispy. And I will bake them at 425 for 15 minutes. I'll take them out and I'll flip them and I'll put them back in at 350 for 10 minutes. And they are super delicious, oil-free, crispy, dill roasted golden potatoes. incorporating leafy greens in the right way. They're gonna have vitamins, they're gonna have minerals, they're gonna have antioxidants, all of the things that your body thrives on. So the key to adding in leafy greens is you wanna eat your leafy greens in abundance without all of the added fat. Think of it this way, when you eat a salad, that is just like taking a big vitamin, a big supplement, right? Don't even think of that as food. I mean, obviously it is food, but I mean, don't think of this as like, oh, I'm eating this huge salad. Like that huge salad that you're eating is probably like 30 calories. Like you're not getting any calories from leafy greens. So think of your leafy greens as just a vitamin and think of everything else that you're eating as the actual food that's going to fuel your body. If you're just sitting down, you're eating nothing but a salad, you aren't getting any calories, just know that. You wanna be able to eat a nice big leafy green salad and have your starchy vegetables or your fruit or some sort of clean carbohydrate with it. That way you know you're gonna get the fuel you need. Because if you don't, you're gonna have cravings later, you're gonna be hungry, you're gonna to wanna to fall off the diet and then the whole eating healthy thing is just gonna go out the window. So I typically like to include my leafy greens toward the end of the day. That's just how I prefer to do it. And so I will have about a half a pound of leafy greens with my dinner in the evening. And I always like to include leafy greens with my evening meals because they do help me to feel more satiated, more satisfied, especially if I'm gonna have a whole grain meal because whole grains are a bit more calorie dense. They, they aren't as satiating as um, starchy vegetables are. So if I'm gonna have a whole grain, 
I definitely like to eat my salad along with that. And of course, if I'm gonna have my starchy vegetable, I eat my salad along with that as well. Starchy vegetables and salad and leafy greens really go well together and it's a nice combo. And I wanna point out that you can absolutely eat leafy greens throughout the day with your fruit meals if that's what you prefer to do, like that, that's a great option. I just, that's just not how I roll, right? But if that's what you wanna do, you do you. So the key point here is that leafy greens are incredibly healthy and you should be eating an abundance of them, but they should not replace your clean carbohydrates. Don't forget to keep it low fat. You can still include an avocado. You can still include a cashew cream sauce or a plant-based dressing or something like that. You just don't want to go crazy with it. If you're gonna include a fat, I would measure it. I would weigh it out, especially if you are new to, uh, you know, just trying to lose weight and dieting and, and counting calories and all that. You're not gonna have a clue. You're not gonna have a clue um, how many calories a handful of pecans has. And so your, your eyes are gonna deceive you and you're gonna think, oh, a handful of pecans, like no big deal. But then you do that and you're like, oh my God, that was like 250 calories and I didn't even realize it. And that 250 calories of pecans didn't even help me to feel full. It just gave me more calories basically. So you just wanna make sure that you're measuring and tracking and weighing your fat because that, that is the one thing that can kinda of sneak by you unnoticed. And if you like this video, click on the video on the screen. This is another video that I think you will like and get some value from. So go check that out and I'll see you there.